This is my V-Drum Sander uh, video part three. Um, I actually had it finished uh, uh, quite a while ago and used it many times. Uh, I just never actually put it back on uh, on the YouTube yet. As you can see, I added a, uh, a guard for the belt. Um, it, uh, this was an interesting little project. Everything is rounded. Everything is, uh, is uh, glued together. It took five pieces of plywood, two three-quarter inches in the middle, followed by... Uh, um, uh, one quarter inch on both sides and another one right in the middle just to make it uh, big enough to fit all the pulleys and the belts. Uh, there is no way you're going to get anything caught uh, in that belt. And of course you just undo some screws. I got three screws around it that, uh, and the whole thing just slides right off. Um, the other thing is, is that I got my sandpaper and um, you just cut them up and peel them off. Uh, it just peels right off the Velcro and uh, spins right on. and uh, works really well. One of the questions that, uh, that uh, someone asked me is how do you raise and lower your drum? Uh, you don't really have to uh, because uh, it works on centrifugal force. The Velcro inside actually gets pushed away and it raises it up. As you can see, when you build it, the idea is to have the tabletop right level with the top of the drum. You shouldn't even move the drum when you're moving this. The drum should just be turning, but just barely touching. And it doesn't matter what grid of sandpaper you put on there, this is the way it should be. And when you turn on the motor, it will raise and will sand um, by the centrifugal force. Now, the only time that I've had to find that, um, that it, it bogs down is when you put on the very heavy duty grit sandpaper. If I go down to an 80 or a 60 grit sandpaper, it is, uh, the sandpaper itself is so thick that it will uh, protrude up above the tabletop. In which case, what I've done is I've added these two basic just number eight screws. I countersink a hole, but, uh, and they just sit there. So whenever I put the thicker sandpaper on, I have to actually raise the table, just a hair, but I have to raise it. So all I do is I take a screwdriver and I turn this a quarter turn. A quarter turn doesn't do much, but it just raises the tabletop a hair just to give it that, that extra space. Oh, and you should know that uh, on my very first video, I believe I had a one quarter horsepower motor on it. And I found with the heavier sandpaper that it, because it bogged down, I added a half horsepower. So now this, this motor here is a one half horsepower uh, engine uh, motor on it and, uh, and works the same way. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's basically it. Very easy to change sandpaper, like I say, just pull it, uh, pull it right off, take your next piece and put it right on. And um, between the, uh, and I've gone right up to 350 grit or something, and uh, my cutting boards and all the wood I do is like glass. It works very well. So the drum does not move, it stays stationary inside the box, and what you're doing is you're raising and lowering the tabletop. And like I said, of all the times I've done it, I've only had to do it when I put on the, the big monster sandpaper, and that's when I'm doing a very rough, like my cutting board right after glue up, get rid of all the glue, get rid of all the, 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 the uh, make, it, make it totally uh, uh, smooth. So um, that's how it works. Uh, added my, uh, my, dust, uh, my uh, belt guard on. I've got a uh, dust port in the back. Uh, hook up my shop back to it. I got a nice long extension cord here that I can run it across the room and, uh, and that's pretty well it. Okay, I hope this explains everything and uh, build yourself one because it works uh, very well.